Welcome to the online training for student government's annual allocations. We have a series of training videos for you, including this overview, a video about accessing and utilizing the RSO funding website, a video on building your event budgets, and finally, a video about what to do once your decisions come in. For this section, we're going to talk a little bit about the committee, its purpose, and how that informs the decision it makes. What can be funded by ANO? There are actually two funding opportunities rolled into the annual allocations process, and we want to make sure you understand what those are. We also want to make sure you understand what you need to do to apply, as well as when the various deadlines occur. Finally, for the committee goals and considerations and imparting your vision, we are going to talk about what the committee is looking for, what they're considering when reviewing budgets, and how you can express your goals and needs to the committee most effectively. A very basic overview of SG annual allocations is that it is a committee of students allocating money that comes from the student activities fees. So it's essentially students giving money to students for campus life activities. How do you apply? It's all done online through the RSO funding website, rsofunding.uchicago.edu. The mechanics of using that site are the focus of the next training video. Annual allocations provides RSOs with some of their primary budget needs for the upcoming year. Those generally include your top priorities in annual events or programs, as well as operational expenses and events that occur before the fifth week of fall when SGFC begins meeting. If you have new programs that you're going to try out next year, it might be a better fit to go to SGFC once you're a little closer to the program date and know what the costs and needs are going to be. It's hard at this stage to plan for a new program, but for your big traditions, top priorities, and annual programs, it's usually pretty easy to look back at your history and come up with a plan for next year at this point. I want to highlight that ANAL is not meant to be the sole source of funding for RSOs. This is one of many methods by which groups can fund their organizations, activities, and events. The committee receives a lot more requests than they have the ability to fund. The committee will see requests in excess of $1 million. Most of these are great ideas for programs, but the committee is usually only able to fund up to 40% of requests, so they have to focus on the top priorities for each group. Getting some funding decisions now through ANAL gives you the seed money for your major programs so that you can then start the rest of your fundraising efforts in the summer or early in the fall. These efforts might include planning fundraisers, selling tickets for events, seeking co-sponsorships, and applying to other funding bodies. As I mentioned earlier, there are two funds running in this process. We've combined these two so that it's a streamlined application process. You can apply for both at the same time, and you don't have to have a second process to contend with. The first is SG's ANL. This is for campus events and programs and operational expenses. These are the kinds of things that you would take to SGFC during the year if you did not get annual allocations funding for them. Note that annual allocations does not fund capital improvements or any travel after the fifth week of fall. SGFC has funds set aside for capital and travel expenses that you can apply for in the next year. The second fund is the Community Service Fund. They also have an annual funding process for direct service projects in the community, as well as community-focused events and programs. It's important to keep in mind that there are some additional criteria for applying to the Community Service Fund. The first is the benefit test. They want to see at least 50% plus one of the individuals benefiting from your event or program come from the wider community and not just the university. That's how they define community-focused programs. Additionally, for any request that goes to the Community Service Fund, they require that 10% of the event cost be fundraised. Many groups will have a mix of events for the Community Service Fund and SG annual allocations in their budget. This is perfectly normal and your budgets will be reviewed based on which committee you indicate for each of your events. In order to be eligible for annual allocations funding, your RSO must meet the eligibility requirements shown here. You may pause the video now to review these requirements or you can go to the Center for Leadership and Involvement's website and follow the link at the top of this tab. In addition to those eligibility requirements, your RSO must also meet all deadlines associated with the annual allocations process. You may pause the video now to review this year's due dates, or you can follow the link at the top of this tab on the Center for Leadership and Involvement's website to review all of the due dates. When the committee is reviewing your budget, what are they looking for? What do they want to see? 
and what are they asking from you? The committee's goal is to take the funds that they have from the student activities fee and allocate them across as many different interests, communities, and types of activities as they can so that these funds, which are paid into by all students, have a broad reach on campus. They're going to review how your proposed events and programs meet your goals and where they fit in that mosaic of offerings on campus. What are the considerations that they're going to use to review your budget? There are quite a few components to that. The first is the current resources available to your organization. You will be asked to provide an explanation for the amount of money you expect to have in your RSO account at the end of this year. They want to know what you have that money set aside for. If you have a high account balance for the end of the year with no specific plans for what to do with it, the committee is probably going to expect that you use those funds to pay for your events, and they're going to use their funds to help RSO events that don't already have resources available. This allows them to ensure that as many events and programs are occurring on campus in the coming year as they can. Thus, it's very important to be thoughtful in explaining an account balance and how you plan to utilize it. They also want to see a history of responsible budgeting and programming. Have your events been successful in the past? Have you been able to stay on budget and has your budget met your needs? They need to be sure that they can count on the information you're giving and that you can follow through once they give money to your programs. They also want to see your commitments to fundraising. ANAL is not intended to be the sole source of funding for a group. So if you've got a larger event or a large budget overall, they want to see that you're committing to fundraising for some of that. They want to understand the effort you're putting into achieving your goals so they can gauge your commitment to your programs and support those events accordingly. They're also going to consider the availability of other funding opportunities. There are lots of different funds on campus, some of which have a particular focus, whether it's the arts, a specific academic discipline, or multicultural events. They're going to consider those opportunities, and if the event you're proposing fits with one of those other opportunities, they're probably going to expect that you find some level of support from those other sources as well. Next, they need to understand what it is you're asking for. So the clarity of your program purpose and a thorough description of your event are vital. Additionally, the detail of your budget allows them to understand how you intend to use the funds. They need to see itemized costs. They are prohibited from funding miscellaneous or vague line items. Finally, there are two sources of information that will be really helpful for you in understanding what the committee can fund. Those are the SGFC guidelines and cost guide. The guidelines give you great information about the kinds of things that they can fund, the kinds of things they generally don't fund, and the things they are absolutely prohibited from funding according to their bylaws. The guidelines help make sure you're on the right track. The second is the SGOC cost guide. This guide includes information about some of the most common expenses they see and provides a good idea of the range of costs they will consider for those. The cost guide also helps keep the committee consistent between groups and between budgets. We talked a little bit about the descriptions and specificity you're going to put into your budget requests, but there are a lot of other ways that you're able to communicate your vision and your goals to the committee. There is an opportunity to upload supporting documents. You don't have to use this exhaustively, but when you have additional information to share, you can do so with an additional supporting document that you upload on the RSO funding website. Participation in one of the budget workshops is also a chance to sit down with some members of the committee and talk through your budget. They can bring that information back to the committee at large during deliberations. Your advisor meeting is also a vital component to this process. Not only will you get feedback from your advisor and support in creating your budgets, but they will also be able to share information about your priorities, your history, and your goals with the committee. This is why it's so important that you have substantial and specific conversations with your advisor during that meeting. Finally, for our groups in the purple RSO category, you will have an opportunity to present to the committee directly and sit and talk with them about your budgets. Thank you for watching our overview of annual allocations. We have lots of great additional information for you online. The RSO funding website is a great place to start. It has links to all of our timelines and documentation on the Center for Leadership and Involvement website. Your RSO advisor is also a key person for you to work with during this process. In addition to advising you through the budget process, they can help you get in touch with representatives from the committee if you need additional support. We hope you will carefully review the remaining training videos on topics including accessing and using the RSO funding website, building and uploading budgets, and what to do after your funding decision comes in. Welcome to the second training module for Student Government's Annual Allocations. 
This module will focus on the funding website, including how to access the funding website and register your budget team, the features and resources available on the website, and how to build your RSO's profile, including your contacts, information about your funding network, and your account balance. Annual allocations applications are all made online via the RSO funding website, which you can access at rsofunding.uchicago.edu. Access to the funding website is based on your roster and blueprint. Your primary contact, president, and treasurer will all have access. Additionally, if you have other members of your organization who will be working on your budget, you can assign them to the budget team position available in your blueprint roster to give them access. Access updates based on any changes you make to your roster are not immediate. During the allocations process, we expect that they should take effect within approximately 15 minutes. If you have questions about managing your roster and blueprint, you should reach out to your RSO advisor. We do strongly recommend that each of your budget team members test their access early in the application process so that you have sufficient time to address any access issues that may arise. You'll be able to log in to the funding website with your CNET ID and password. Once you've logged in, you will land on your funding portal, where in the left pane, you'll find RSO funding links that will take you through the application components of the site. Below that are numerous resource links that provide information for RSOs, including links to the Center for Leadership and Involvement's overview pages about annual allocations, the schedule, and training materials. Additionally, there are links about some of the other funding bodies like SGFC, the Community Service Fund, and Summer SGFC. Additionally, we have training materials about the Blueprint Finance module linked here for your access. Lastly, there are links to some of those important documents you'll need to review before you start building your budget, the SGFC guidelines and cost guide. Once you've reviewed all of the training information and resources, you're ready to start working on your budget. Select Review Submit a Budget to begin. On this page, you'll find entries for all of the organizations for which you hold a position in Blueprint that permits you to access annual allocations. Again, those positions are primary contact, president, treasurer, or budget team. If you have access for more than one RSO, they will appear on this page serially. It is extremely important to make sure that if you have access for multiple organizations, that you are always working within the correct one. If you accidentally build an event in the wrong RSOs section, it will not be transferable and you'll have to start over. Within your RSO section, you will find four components. The RSO profile will serve as a header for your entire budget. Your budget archive provides a historical record of your previous requests and the decisions of the committee. This includes line item detail as well as event descriptions for your reference. New funding requests is where you will build your budgets for the committee for this year. This section will be discussed in detail in the next training module on building budgets. Finally, supporting documents. Here is the place where you can upload documents to provide to the committee. You can see the documents you've provided in the past as well as upload new documents. Anytime you upload documents, make sure to name them to correspond with the event to which they pertain. When you begin building your budget, the first thing you should do is update your RSO profile. Here you'll find some general information about your organization drawn from Blueprint, including a list of your members who can access your budget. The first thing that you need to update are your two budget contacts. Each organization will re be required to supply two contacts. These will be pre-populated with last year's information if you previously applied for ANL, so it's very important to make sure that they're updated. Your designated contacts are the individuals to whom the committee can reach out if they have questions during deliberation, so it's important to choose the correct individuals from your budget team to list as contacts. These individuals should be knowledgeable about the budget you've submitted and also be able to be responsive if the committee puts out an inquiry. If you're not able to respond in a timely fashion, they may not be able to include your responses in their deliberations. Next, we ask for a breakdown in your membership. This is a rough approximation of your general membership across different categories. This helps the committee understand uh, the scope of your organization and who is participating. Finally, there's a section about your funding status. This is important for the committee in that it helps them understand the overall financial landscape in which you're making your request.
The first question is, do you get support from any other sources? Here, you should list any fundraising you typically do and any regular co-sponsors, whether those be departments, businesses, or simply donations. Also, you can include any other funding committees from whom you regularly receive support. You do not need to include SGFC here. These are not intended to be firm commitments for next year, as you can't predict that at this point. Rather, they are used to provide the committee with an understanding of your funding network and the type of additional outreach you are committed to making beyond SG funding. Additionally, they want to know if you collect dues, and if so, how those are used by your organization. Again, this is to get a better understanding of your financial workings. Last, we get to questions about your account balance. It's important to fill out an accurate account balance here. The committee will have access to information about your current account balance, so be as accurate as possible. The next field asks about the plans for those funds. The committee wants to see how those funds are earmarked so they can understand how much is available to you to fund your programs for next year. For example, if you have $2,000 listed as being in your account now, but only $500 is for your study break in May, and there's another $1,500 that's for your conference in June, you simply need to itemize those expenses so that the committee knows that they're earmarked. You may choose to upload an additional document to explain a large number of earmarks. What they're looking for here is funds that are not thoroughly earmarked for specific programs. If you have a surplus for a rainy day, they're going to ask you to use those funds to cover some portion of the events you're applying to them for so that they can fund organizations that don't have funds on hand for their programs already. It all boils down to the committee's goal to fund a large offering of diverse events on campus. If you propose an event, but you have enough available funds to hold that event, the committee is going to focus their efforts on funding groups who have a demonstrated financial need. If you do have a surplus, you can elect to contribute portions of it to your annual budgets by adding fundraising line items within each, each of your budgets, stating that they're coming from current funds. If you have a debt, you'll be asked to indicate that and provide information on how you've been working to pay off the debt. The committee wants to see you're putting the work you're putting into maintaining a responsible financial plan before offering more funds to your programs. Once you've updated all those fields, you can submit the query. and you're ready to move on to the next stage, building your budget. Please join us for our next module, which will cover that process. In the meantime, there's a lot of additional support that's available, including on our website and the funding website. And again, don't hesitate to reach out to your advisor if you have questions. Welcome to the third training module for Student Government's Annual Allocations. In this module, we'll take a look at the process for developing your program budgets, including an overview of eligible events and programs, prioritizing your budgets, the criteria the committee uses in evaluating budgets, adding budgets to your annual application, and how to submit your final budget. Eligible budgets will come from RSOs. There are several categories of organizations that have alternate funding sources and will not submit budgets through this annual process. New RSOs, RSOs in the Program Coordinating Council, and sports clubs are not eligible for ANAL. Additionally, RSOs that are part of the Coalition of Academic Teams will only submit budgets for recruiting events and on-campus programs, not for travel or competition. Eligible organizations will be able to submit budgets for public events and programs, operational costs for running organizations, as well as travel occurring early in the fall quarter. Travel occurring after fifth week of fall can be funded by SGFC's travel fund and won't be considered through ANL. Likewise, capital expenses for the acquisition of equipment and materials for ongoing use, private events not open to the campus population, and donations to outside organizations are not eligible to be funded through ANL. Please remember that the Community Service Fund is also accepting annual allocations budgets through this same process, so your community service projects and community-based events are eligible to be funded by CSF. Your overall annual allocations application will include separate budget submissions for each of your events. We will regularly use the term event to refer to each of your budget entries for NL, but programs and operational expenses are also eligible for funding. For events that recur weekly or quarterly, you can choose to submit a single form or you can break them down and submit individual budgets for each occurrence. 
The method you employ will depend on how you choose to rank those programs. For example, if you have a quarterly film series, you may combine the screenings into one single budget with a single ranking, or you may choose to rank fall and spring events higher than winter, for example. In this case, you would submit a separate budget entry for the winter screening so that you can rank it separately. You should take note that for recurring events, the committee will typically subsidize only a part, expecting that additional occurrences should be supported via fundraising. Weekly events where you are requesting food, in particular, can be expected to require substantial fundraising. When deciding what budgets to include, it is important to make sure that you have all of the necessary information that you will need to develop a comprehensive budget. Since budgets funded by ANAL can't be submitted to SGFC later for additional funding, you want to make sure that you have a complete picture of the event and a budget that will accommodate all of your needs if you plan to submit it to ANAL. For each budget you plan to submit, you should make sure you have attendance estimates, these should be based on previously held instances of annual events or attendance at similar events you've held in the past. These figures will factor into the cost guide based ranges for certain of your expenses, as well as an overall picture of the cost per participant breakdown that the committee may examine. Proposed dates, times, and locations. Obviously, at this early stage, you are not able to commit to dates or reserve space for most of your events, so this information is intended to give the committee a picture of how your programs will factor into your overall program schedule. You should include information representative of how you'd like to schedule each event. Adjustments to these items are to be expected as you put together your programs in the next year. A list of expenses. Making sure you understand all of your costs and program needs is vital to having a successful annual allocations that will effectively support your activities in the coming year. Common items that are left out by RSOs include funds for advertising your events, charges for audiovisual equipment, and fees for securing the rights to screen any films. Your experience in planning events and the support of your RSO advisor are particularly helpful in making sure you've covered all foreseeable costs. As most programs submitted through ANAL are indeed annual, the system will pre-populate your submissions from last year for inclusion this year. This helps you make sure you're not forgetting any components. If you found any additional or unforeseen costs as you put together your events this year, you'll want to make sure to adjust your budgets for next year. A list of potential speakers. For any event with speakers, you should provide an accurate list of who you are inviting to speak to help the committee understand the event you are proposing. Before submitting your annual budget, you should contact those speakers and acquire a quote for their speaking fee and an estimate of their travel costs. Please upload those to your supporting documents for the committee's review. If you cannot prepare the exact speaker details in advance, you may want to wait for SGFC next year to submit the program's budget so that you can get a better idea of your speaker funding needs. For any services, you should be able to explain how you came to the amounts quoted in your budget. Most effective are a quote from a company, past charges incurred, or airfare quotes from the internet. Funding requests for expenses such as charter of school buses, catering orders, travel costs, or the rental of equipment should all have a demonstrable basis. You can include these in the notes section of the budget, or you can upload quote documents. Don't feel pressured to submit everything through ANAL. If, at this early time, too many details are unknown for some of your proposed programs, you should give serious thought to waiting and taking those budgets to SGFC next year. That committee has access to the same pool of funds as ANAL and meets weekly beginning fifth week of fall to provide additional opportunities for funding for new and developing programs. As the committee reviews each of your event budgets, they will utilize your prioritizations to determine how to allocate funds to you. The committee will begin with your first priority and consider funding for each of your events in turn until they reach a point at which they need to move on to funding other organizations. If your first priority is extremely costly, for example, the committee may decide to focus their funding on that single event and leave you to fundraise or apply to SGFC for further priorities. If you would prefer to get partial funding for multiple events, you should share that information with the committee and your advisor. When determining your rankings, you should consider factors like which events are vital to your mission, which are key to your brand on campus, which events have historically received little support from other sources, and events taking place very early in the year that provide little lead time for fundraising. ANAL requires the itemization of all expenses. No line items for undifferentiated sums, such as extra money to have on hand for unforeseen costs, can be considered. As you develop your individual event budgets for inclusion, you'll want to make sure to keep in mind the SGFC guidelines and cost guide. These documents will help you make sure that the funds you're requesting are in line with what the committee is able to fund.
Some highlights include the inability of the committee to fund closed events that are for your organization's membership only, donations or giveaway items like branded goods or t-shirts, a prohibition against funding honoraria to you Chicago faculty or staff, and the preference for free venues on campus over those with a cost where there is no demonstrated need to use a venue with cost. The cost guide will also provide you with dollar amount ranges the committee can consider funding for many types of expenses like food, publicity, and travel. To begin to build your annual budgets for the committee, you should log into the funding website at rsofunding.uchicago.edu and navigate to the Review Submit a Budget page. For information about accessing the funding website, please review our training module about the funding website. If your organization applied for ANAL last year, you will have pre-populated budgets here, so make sure to review and update them or to delete them. The system will not allow you to submit your budget until all pre-populated events have been addressed. Submitting a brand new event is as easy as clicking the Add Event button. You can update any of your budget drafts as often as needed before you submit your final budget. In this example, we'll edit a budget draft for ANAL training. Each event or program will have its own budget entry, so you begin with the name of your event or program. Then you will select the committee this particular event is for, either Annual Allocations or the Community Service Fund. You will also need to indicate your priority ranking for this budget. Date, time, and location proposals for the event are next. For administrative or operational expenses, you can include a date when you would first need access to the funds. If an event is recurring and you are submitting expenses for multiple instances under this single heading, it's vital to select the correct frequency description so that the committee can clearly understand your budget. You can select weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly, or other. Locations are tentative at this point, so select a space that would meet your needs that you would like to use. They don't need to be reserved at this early stage. The description field is next and is very important. This is the field that lets the committee understand the nature of the event, your goals for the event, and your intended audience. Your descriptions don't need to be voluminous, but they should allow committee members unfamiliar with your RSO to understand the event. Next come a series of checkboxes which help the committee understand a little bit about your event's history and previous funding sources. For expected attendance, you should be as accurate as you can. If you are hoping to expand event participation from the past, please make a note to that effect in the description or member notes section. Significant increases warrant a description of enhanced marketing efforts to reach the new goal. Anticipated admissions asks you how much you plan to earn from ticket sales if you're charging admissions for your event. This box should reflect the total dollar amount in ticket sales anticipated, not just a per ticket cost. Any anticipated ticket income will also need to be deducted from your line item budget, as the SGFC guidelines require all ticket, admission, or registration income to be deducted from the cost of your event. Other funding sources is a chance for you to list the other sources of funding you have received in the past for your program or the sources you plan to reach out to for next year. You should make a commitment to how much you plan to raise and deduct it from the event's budget line items. For a large-scale event where you list no fundraising, the committee may determine an amount of fundraising that they feel is appropriate. The Member Notes section is another opportunity for you to share information with the committee. Here you can add info about event recurrences, potential speakers, changes in attendance goals, or anything else you'd like to share. With all of that information supplied, it's time to take a look at your itemized budget for the program. Remember, you're creating one of these event profiles for each event or program, so limit the line items to the program at hand. For each line item, you should provide a brief name. This should be a description of what, what it is, the vendor, you can include quantity information, etc. The field is small, so do your best to be as communicative with your descriptions as possible. If you cannot convey all of the detail you need, please feel free to submit an additional document with more detail or utilize the member notes section. Once you've titled your budget items, select the category that best describes the event, expense. There are items here for expenses as well as different types of income that you may need to deduct. The amount fields begin with the amount requested last year and the amount granted last year fields. The site will automatically supply this data for any of your pre-populated budgets from last year's annual. Newly requested items will not have data in these fields. Just a note here, if you don't plan to ask for one of your pre-populated line items again this year, I would recommend against deleting the line. Rather, I would 
say, submit zero dollars in the request amount line. That way, the amount of funding you were granted last year is still preserved within the budget. The spent this year column is where you report to the committee how much you spent on each light item this year. This should be included for all items unless you have a new budget that you're electing to take to NL instead of SGFC. For events happening later this quarter, you should estimate this year's costs based on your event planning work done so far. Finally, the request amount field is where you indicate the amount of funding you're requesting from the committee. When you are including fundraising and co-sponsorships, it's important to include all the costs of the event in your line items, even those for which you have other sources of funding. You should include those line items too, then offset their cost by including income line items with negative dollar amounts in the request field, as seen under our fundraising item. Remember that for any CSF budgets, you must show at least 10% of the cost of the event being offset in this manner. As you can see in the last line item of this budget, the co-sponsorship we listed in the Other Funding Sources field has been deducted in the line items. This helps the committee understand the full cost of the event and how ticket sales, sponsorships, and fundraising come into play. Here's where groups sometimes run into trouble. If I had not included that income line item, the committee would have deducted $75 in fundraising for me. This would work out the same on this budget. But, let's say my co-sponsorship funding was specifically earmarked to cover part of the speaker's fee, and I had deducted the co-sponsorship amount from the speaker fee and not shown the full costs in the line items. By deducting the co-sponsorship directly from the speaker line and not having a separate income line, the committee would think I hadn't factored in that income. When the committee now deducts $75 in co-sponsorship that I didn't include, the budget actually reflects less than the funding needed for the event. So, make sure your fundraising commitments and ticket sales don't get double counted. Include the full expenses for the event, and then offset your fundraising or ticket sales. Once you save your budget at the bottom of the page, totals will be included at the bottom of your line items. This is a good place to double check your budget and make sure it represents everything that you need. Another key piece of info for working on budgets is that the system will time out. Save your work regularly. By saving periodically, you'll also get those updates to the totals that will help you keep track of your expenses. So once you've updated or deleted all of your pre-populated budgets from last year and built all of your new budgets, you'll need to submit your application. These saved budgets are not available to the committee until they've been submitted, so don't forget this step. When your budgets are finalized, click the Final Review and Submit button. Here, you'll get an overview of each event you've submitted along with the totals for your entire budget. If everything looks correct, you should affirm that you have read all of the requirements and information, including the SGFC guidelines and cost guide, and then click Submit Budget Request. You will receive an email confirmation of your submission, and you will also be able to see a timestamp of when your budget was submitted. You will be unable to make any further edits once you've submitted your budget, so make sure you're ready before doing so. We hope that this overview of budgets has been helpful and that you will join us for our next presentation about reviewing your allocations. If you have any questions about the funding website, building budgets, or the ANAL process overall, please take a look at the resources on the Center for Leadership and Involvement website. You can also reach out to your RSO advisor or to the committee representatives for further assistance. Welcome to the fourth and final training module for Student Government's Annual Allocations. In this module, we'll take a look at the post-award steps, including an overview of potential funding results, how to review the committee's decisions, the process for appealing a decision, and what to do once you have your results. There are several funding strategies that the committee might employ when reviewing each of your individual events or budget items. An event may receive full funding, which is self-explanatory. The committee may also issue no funding for some events. Any event for which the committee feels the details are not fully developed might receive no funding. Additionally, once the committee has funded as much as they feel they are able of your highest priority budgets, your remaining lower priority event budgets may see no funding. This does not necessarily mean that you cannot get funding for these events, but rather that you will need to apply to SGFC next year for those events not funded by ANAL. 
partial funding may also be employed. The committee may assign partial funding for specific line items if there are some components of your budget that they are unable to fund. You would need to fundraise or approach other sources to cover the unfunded line items. An example may be that for a mid-level priority panel event, they choose to fund the speaker travel, ensuring that you can hold the event, but ask you to seek alternate funding sources to add catering to the program. Partial funding with no line item detail is a way the committee provides seed funding for more costly events. For example, they may give $2,000 towards a $5,000 conference to help you get started with planning the event and ask you to fundraise the remaining cost. In this case, they leave the distribution of funds up to your discretion within the line items that were proposed in the budget. If one of your event budgets receives funding from ANAL, the event becomes ineligible for funding from SGFC in the coming year. Each event or program is eligible to be presented for funding to either ANAL or SGFC, not both, as they are both drawn from the same pool of funds, simply allocated in different ways. There are two possible exceptions to this rule. The committee, when providing partial funding, may provide a note that once you've done some fundraising, you can apply to SGFC to help make up any final difference between your cost and your fundraising. Or, if your program sees a significant change in nature during the course of the next year, you could position to SGFC for additional funds. Remember, this only applies to budgets that are funded. Budgets that do not receive funding from ANAL will be eligible to go to SGFC, provided that they fall within the committee's timeline and guidelines. To review the committee's decisions and any notes they provided to the members of your budget team, you can log back into the RSO funding website on the posted decision date. It is important to note that any information you find in the system prior to the decision date may not be representative of the committee's ultimate decisions. To review the current year's decisions, open your Review Submit a Budget page, seen here, and click View Funding Request. From this page, you can review each of your budgets and the committee's decisions. Line item allocations and comments will appear, as well as the overall total for allocations that are final from the committee. Information about decisions in previous years is also available. From the Review Submit a Budget page, you can select View Past Budgets from the Budget Archive. This archive represents all of your ANAL submissions since the RSO funding website was launched. The committee does set aside funds for the review of appeals. If you feel the committee has misjudged your priorities, program needs, budget line items, or fundraising options, you will have the opportunity to appeal their decision. Appeals are due 24 hours after decisions become available and must be based on the original budget submitted through the website. You can reach out to your advisor for support through the appeals process. Your statement of the appeal would be due to the committee chair by the posted due date. Once you have your final allocation, you begin to craft an, a plan to meet your additional fundraising needs and start to assign members of your event planning team their tasks. You can anticipate the deposit of your funds from annual allocations to be made into your account in September. We hope that you found these training modules useful. Please feel free to review them again throughout the application process. If you have any questions or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to your advisor or the committee's representatives.